Uh, chapter one of the book uh, starts with uh, what you might consider to be sort of boundary conditions on the nature of the human. Um, and, and in a way, they are sort of the, the, the zones in which a lot of political controversy has existed throughout the modern era and certainly exists with us today. Uh, and, and I define them in terms of race and religion. Um, on the one hand, the issue of race, which is very closely associated with the biological nature of humanity, has to do with the possibility that the idea that some sense all of humanity is unified under some sort of concept or idea is in a sense purely theological. In other words, there is no naturalistic basis for it, and that basically uh, races are sort of subspecies in the making. Uh, and now this view, in fact, has had a strong kind of undercurrent, and in fact, it was the reason why James D. Watson, one of the discoverers of the, of the double helix structure of DNA, was in fact kicked out of this country in Britain uh, two or three years ago when he was promoting a book and said during the book tour that in fact development aid was a waste of money on African people because they weren't intelligent enough to use it wisely. So that's one side of the equation that very much causes a lot of controversy and has been very much with us that in a way sort of splits open the notion of the human and exposes it to a sort of very purely naturalistic understanding. But on the other hand, we have religion, especially the sort of theological views that come from the biblical religions. And here we get the idea that there's some sense in which human beings have a special connection with God and that science may in fact be the means by which we increase our closeness and maybe even return to the creator. And the most recent expression of this kind of viewpoint, which again is very strong in Western intellectual history, has been intelligent design theory, which is a, a sort of form of scientific creationism, you may call it, uh, that basically says that the very fact that we can make sense of the world, the fact that it in appears intelligible and rational to us, and we're able to succeed in making sense of nature in that mode, indicates the extent to which there is a grand intelligence from whom we descend behind it. And of course, that is has caused an enormous amount of controversy, increasingly so around the world. Um, now behind these two sorts of controversies, the racial and the religion one, is the issue of what exactly are the boundaries of our humanity. And the way that I pursue this for most of the chapter, chapter one, has to do with in fact the way in which the discipline of sociology, which again sort of presents itself as being the caretaker of this concept of humanity, uh, how it arose in the British context, where there's a very interesting story to be told, uh, mainly because, in fact, Britain is the country where the biological sciences are most strongly developed, and of course, Charles Darwin being the obvious case in point, and where there was a very strong push to have a very biological understanding of sociology in its founding. But that was turned away, and it was turned away for a lot of very interesting reasons, um, which I explore in that chapter. Uh, but one of the consequences has been that sociology has largely developed in the 20th century, not only in Britain, but throughout the world, very disconnected from the animal side of things. And that's been, to a, lot, to a largely, a great cost. On the positive side, of course, sociology has been very much in the vanguard of being concerned about all forms of human life, no matter how exalted or how trivial, how wealthy, how poor, there has been this egalitarian, democratic attitude that sociology has exhibited toward human beings, not only at the level of study, but at the level of policy as well. And in that respect, the welfare state is a very strong testimony to the importance of sociology's conception of what the human is. But that, as we all know, is undergoing an enormous amount of stress and pressure as we begin the 21st century. And my uh, chapter ends on that note.